Hello, I'm Dr. Alex Levin, Chief of Pediatric Ophthalmology and Ocular Genetics at Will's Eye Institute in Philadelphia. On behalf of Will's Eye and the friends and family of the Pediatric Glaucoma and Cataract Family Association, today I'd like to teach you about the Red Reflex Test. This test is a critical tool in screening for vision problems in children. Every primary care physician should be using this test at their well child visits, a test that takes only seconds to do to help screen for serious vision threatening and sometimes life threatening pathology in children. The test requires very little equipment. The direct ophthalmoscope is available in most settings. It's relatively inexpensive and very easy to use. Let's go through how the direct ophthalmoscope can be used to do the red reflex test. To perform the red reflex test, one wants to use the largest circle of white light available through the direct ophthalmoscope. The direct ophthalmoscope comes with several different tools, as seen here. Your goal is to find your largest circle of light, as shown here, and use that light to do the test. You can do this test with your glasses on or your glasses off, but the patient's glasses should be off. Look through the aperture of the direct ophthalmoscope and then spinning the wheel, bring the patient's face into focus. Now that you understand the equipment that's used for this test, let's move into an examination room with some children and see how the test is performed. To begin, position yourself approximately one meter in front of the child. Using the direct ophthalmoscope, illuminate the child's face so that both eyes are in view. Remember to use your focusing wheel to bring the child's face into focus. With infants, getting the child's eyes open can be a challenge. Hold the child in this position at 45 degrees with one hand on the chest and the other hand on the baby's buttocks. By jiggling the buttocks, the eyes will open. You can teach the mother or father to hold the baby in this position while you do the red reflex test, thus allowing you an unobstructed view. Although it has long been called the red reflex, what is seen in the ophthalmoscope as light reflects back to the examiner from the inside of the eye often appears yellow, orange, or red, or a combination. Here is a normal red reflex. Eliciting the reflex requires the light to be able to travel unobstructed through clear, colorless ocular structures and fluids, the cornea, aqueous humor, lens, and vitreous. A normal red reflex requires clarity of each element. Here is another normal child with a normal red reflex. The child isn't looking directly at the examiner, and that causes some asymmetry between the two eyes. But even with the asymmetry, both eyes appear normal, with a yellow or orangish reflex that's fairly homogeneous throughout. You may notice in the child's left eye on your right, a little bit of a yellow crescent at the edge of the reflex, which is also acceptable. This child has a normal red reflex in the right eye, seen on your left. Although it is a bit heterogeneous, yellowish at the top and more orange at the bottom, it is a normal eye. In the child's left eye, seen on your right, there is an obstruction to the light bouncing off from inside the eye. That obstruction is a cataract, which appears as a black spot in the red reflex. A black or absent red reflex can be caused by corneal scars, cataracts, blood in the eye, such as hyphema or vitreous hemorrhage. This can be a very ominous sign that requires urgent referral to an ophthalmologist. Here is another child with cataract causing two black spots in the red reflex. Once again, a black circle within an otherwise normal red reflex represents a cataract. Never ignore a black red reflex. This should always prompt an ophthalmic referral. However, if a child has a complete black reflex in each eye, this may simply be due to small pupils, especially in infants. In still dilating drops to make the pupils larger, check again in 20 minutes. If the red reflex is then normal, then no referral is needed. 
Perhaps the most ominous abnormality in the red reflex is the white red reflex, also known as leukocoria. Here we see a normal red reflex in this child's right eye, but a yellow-white color in the left eye. Top on the differential diagnosis is retinoblastoma, a malignant tumor of childhood that occurs in the eye, which can be life-threatening. There are other causes of leukocoria, including infection, coloboma, and other malformations. One must always think about retinoblastoma. Urgent referral to an ophthalmologist is required. The red reflex can also be used to detect abnormalities of lens position. Following trauma, this child has a white cataractus lens that is displaced up into the left. Around the lens to the right, one sees a normal red reflex following surgery with stitches still in place. Here we see a child with Marfan syndrome. The arrows indicate the edges of the lens through which one can see a normal red reflex above. The lens has been displaced upwards. The whitish area down and to the left is an artifact of the photo. Abnormalities of the pupil and iris can also be detected with the red reflex. Here we see a child with axenfeld rieger spectrum, a disorder that causes a congenital abnormality of iris structure. Note the normal red reflex, which is a bit orange, behind the abnormal iris and pupil. Lastly, we have a child with no iris or pupil at all. This child has aniridia. The red reflex, however, is normal. Now let's look at the red reflex test in action. Here we see the light illuminating both eyes of the child simultaneously. This is a normal child and the red reflex is normal, symmetric between the two eyes. Here is our infant patient. Notice once again, both eyes are illuminated and the reflex is symmetrical. As she moves around, sometimes one eye looks a little white or yellow compared to the other, and then as the position changes, back to red reflex again. When in doubt, refer to an ophthalmologist. This child had a normal eye examination. Here we have one more normal child. The reflex is a bit heterogeneous, but symmetrical between the two eyes and perfectly within normal limits. Thank you for taking the time to watch this video. I hope you're now more comfortable in doing the red reflex test, and I'm also hopeful that you understand its simplicity and importance. Those of us at Will's Eye Institute and the Pediatric Glaucoma and Cataract Family Association hope that you'll use this test in your daily practice to help save sight and save lives. Thank you.